Okay, episode four. Welcome back, everyone. Um, yes. <laughs> tonight we are talking about Olympic lifts, and no, Logan, not the oh, ones you see fuck. made up on the internet. We we're talking oh, about the snatch, the clean, and the jerk. Um, <laughs> I think most importantly is to start off to talk about all the excuses that people use to not use them. So, yes. um, I think we should start off by discussing. If we use them, or first, what they are, if we use them, why you think they're important, etc. Nick? So, what are they, off. Mike? What are they? Yeah, you said what they are. Oh, yeah. Well, in their true form, you're talking the snatch from the floor, and the clean and I jerk from the floor. Yeah. Yes. So... In true Olympic lifting context, that's what there are. Now, they're obviously often butchered and renamed and whatever else you want to think of in different settings. But those are the true forms. And, I mean, you'll see a lot of varieties and things like that, too. But, um, you know, the main benefit that people, you know, credit them to is power development. So which I personally like them. I don't really do them myself, but if I train an athlete, I do them. Yeah. They're to total body movements. Both all of them are. Well, when I say all of them, obviously we're talking about snatch and clean and jerk, but all right. the variations, all the variations and progressions. So, you know, you're training the push press, split jerk, power jerk, the clean pull, snatch pull, pull some different positions, Pulls from deficits, hang cleans, hang snatches. Yeah. Right. So that, yeah, like I think, I think that like that's part of the problem too, is like a lot of times people, you know, who might not be super familiar with them, they might see those lifts, like I described them, like snatch, clean, and jerk from the floor and think like that's too difficult. I don't want to use them. And which is true, like to some extent, because that is a very difficult like movement to perform, but to your point, like the variations, I think is where the benefit comes in with those lifts, you know, cause like snatch in its purest form is snatch from the floor, but there's, you know, five steps or however you want to teach them to get to snatch from the floor. So a lot of times, like when I had teams, it was, you know, we, we, I didn't ever snatch from the floor, but if somebody asked me if I did Olympic lifts, I said, yes, because, yeah. you know, like right now is the start of fall. So you would be starting off with the most novice progression of an olympic lift possible which would just be teaching you know like the progression that we're all familiar with like we're going to teach from the top down so you teach them how to rack the bar how to squat the bar how to hinge with the bar and then you add some speed but if those things don't work well at the beginning well you're not going to have them jump right into a clean right right and i've even i've even evolved a little bit from from that progression where i just go straight usaw right and go position one two and three multiple mm -hmm. poles at each position then multiple cleans or snatches at each position and now i always i always teach when we when my guys come in for a developmental group we always teach olympic lifts for four weeks or six weeks however long we need and um the we'll snatch from the floor in that time frame i go but, but when we get into training like so our next, we start school on Monday When we get into training, like I'll rarely snatch from the ground. I'll pull, I'll snatch pull from the ground, but I'll rarely snatch from the ground. Um, and I'll use it as like a, a, a speed movement and go from, go from the hang. Um, and I, well, I almost never, ever go maximally with the snatch um, just for safety purposes because mm -hmm. it's, it's a great movement and I, and I love doing it, but it's going to be hard for me to justify to a, sport coach why billy dislocated his shoulder doing a max effort snatch come on um, so i'm just taking cost rewards there yeah yeah and i mean the the teaching i think is the most important part so like even if like you know some like i i never did anything from the floor like with people just because i didn't you know like you know, it, it, I, I, like, just like you said, it's like, if it was, if I think it's really risky to do it from the floor, like that's the last thing I'm going to do is a speed or power oriented lift from the floor, especially with somebody like who I might not have a ton of time 
you know, like, like, especially basketball, like you might have them, you might have them starting now and they have a first game in November. So like, I don't necessarily, I don't think the benefit from going from the hang to the floor is that much greater than just staying at the hang. So that's the thought process that I use, like why I didn't go from the floor, but I think going back, like you mentioned, like USAW, and that's a specific like progression to get to perform the Olympic lift. And I think it's valuable to have that system because you always have something to fall back on. So that is like when he's referring to that, he's talking front squat, RDL, positional pulling, which for the clean and snatch is a little bit different, but position one, middle of the thigh, two above the knee, position three from the floor or middle of the shin. And then you work into catching off of that. So then from there, you would ideally get into cleaning or snatching from the floor or hangs, vice versa. But yeah, that's that, that that's the value, I think, in having that system. Like for us, I think it's easy to just kind of like roll that off the tongue and just be like, yeah, we use USAW or whatever. But the more I talk to people, I don't think that they have something like that. They've just kind of seen what somebody else has done and then they just follow like, oh, yeah, we're just cleaning. So then cleaning just means that just we just start hang cleaning. You know, there's no like real slow teaching process of like how to rack the bar, you know, how to hinge the hip, how to jump or, you know, move the bar up into position, things like that. Right. Yeah. Um, for me, it's like, I do them personally. I love them um, for my own stuff. And then I act, I have my athletes do them too. And um, I've spent a little bit more time in like the high school kid realm and like a little bit private more than you guys have. And when I work with high school athletes, like one of the biggest things that I'm thinking about is I need this kid to be as prepared as possible when they go to college. So I need to expose them to all of the different positions, lifts, anything that they can do, because I want them to be able to go in day one into a college strength and conditioning program and be able to perform whatever their strength coach asks even though like assuming they did do an Olympic when those, when those freshmen yeah no, no no that's why I I don't know I can't just assume that they do or don't like I have to have them have all the tools in their toolbox so whatever comes up when they get there they have right. to be able to do it because because to, to me like if I send someone in unprepared like I haven't done my job right even though like week one if you have a strength coach bringing in a bunch of true freshmen they're probably not going to do anything crazy anyways well that's a um, but at least if if they do if they don't whatever like my, my kids prepared for whatever is thrown at them sure you know? so how intelligent that strength coach is. see yeah and i think that's a good point too like it's, it's it's way different like you know like in college versus high school like you know like you said it's like your job is to make sure they're ready for whatever might get thrown at them which you know i mean that could be gassers or sets of 50 on the back squat or i don't know yep. like who who know i mean you literally have no but I, but you know like you so mean? like for you you have to make sure that you know how to teach those things so that if they say like on day one like we talked about maybe they don't take them through a super slow progression like to get to a clean they just say all right we're clean today and billy you're going to get up to a three rep max and then they're i, I mean my, my my first day of college we max one rep max yeah clean. But yeah. see, from, from, from yeah. the ground, from the ground, and I'd never done anything but hang, and I was well, problem. I didn't do it, and I didn't do it well. Like I didn't know. Um, I, I'm better at Olympic lifting now than I was in my four years of college, just because of the experiences I've had, and then obviously, right. um, work people I work with. Like I worked, and this here's my next question too. So I worked with Coach Mo, South Dakota State, who's no longer in the profession. Legend. But huge, huge Olympic lifting um, emphasis, you know, or, or I don't See, know, background. background so they're in kilos, for goodness sake. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. So, yeah, the weight room was in kilos. We were cleaning from the floor, snatching from the floor, jerking, split jerking, pressing, everything, clean and jerk. Um, we did it all, you know, right. and that was my – that was really my biggest exposure. That was – after the CSCS, that was my first certification was the USAW weightlifting certification. So <clears throat> with him, you know, I've taken that on into my career and utilized all the Olympic lifts, but I've also learned how to coach them. And I've learned how to coach them several different ways. I also work, worked with Richard Borden, who was a international Olympic lifting coach um, when I was at Utah State. So 
I've had all those experiences. So my, my question then becomes, do you guys feel like Olympic lifts are dying in the strength and conditioning world at the college level? Well, yeah. I, I mean, but I think it depends how you define them. Like, like I think, cause when you mentioned like, you know, S South, uh, SCSU, there was a big yeah. emphasis on Olympic lifts. Like, I think for us, that means one thing, but I think for other people or like new coaches, it means something way different. Like if, when I first started, if somebody said, oh yeah, we're super Olympic based or we're an Olympic based program. Like, I think that means to other people that, that, that you're like you, your whole day is comprised of the Olympic lifts, which like now I think about that. And if I say, yeah, I utilize the Olympic lifts and that is a primary emphasis in the program. It's like, well, that means I'm probably spending, like if it was a program for a team, they're probably going to spend like eight minutes on the Olympic lift at most. Like it, yeah. you know, like it just, I think it scares people if they say like, oh yeah, our, we have an Olympic based program because then they think like, oh, this person's going to, they're going to clean from the floor and they're going to clean pull and they're going to jerk and they're going to leave. It's like, no, that's not at all what it is. What I think yeah. it is, you know, and especially as like you're in, the, like when you're in a position of like having new coaches that you're trying to teach and things like that, like an Olympic based program means you go through like that teach progression we talked about at the beginning. Like we teach the front squat and the hinge and the, those movements are going to be utilized as primary strength movements too, but they're derivatives of the Olympic lifts. So mm -hmm. every, you know, to teach the front, the clean, you have to teach the front squat, the hinge, the, you know, speed type pulling, but those are just based off of the Olympic lifts, which are derivatives, which means it's a Olympic based program. Yeah. If that makes yeah. sense. I, I mean, I would say if somebody asked me that question, I'd say, yeah, I, I run an Olympic based program, Correct. but I don't, yeah. but I don't run an Olympic lifting program. No. Like, so we don't well, we, on it. Yeah. Uh, so we, so on Monday we don't clean, clean pull, RDL and front squat and we're done. That That's not how, that, that's not what we do. And on, our snatch day, on our snatch day, we don't go, we don't go snatch balance, snatch, snatch pull, back squat. Like that, that's not, that's not how my program runs. But right. every, every day I have an Olympic lifting. Uh, I have an Olympic lift, whether that be the snatch, the clean, or the jerk right. or, or, or a variation of, of any of those. And then we, we, we high bar back squat, we front squat with our, in our normal front squat position, not with our arms crossed. <clears throat> we front squat, we front squat and we hinge, but we also hinge, we hinge at different hand placements, whether that be a clean grip or a snatch grip. Yeah. So this made me think of this because, like what, what are the thoughts? So like we talked about like some of the, you know, like some people say they don't have enough time, which is just an excuse, whatever. I don't really care. But like the thing Bullshit. that I think is more value or that actually makes sense as I'm reading stuff is like a true beginner, an Olympic lift probably isn't that beneficial in terms of like developing a certain quality just because their body. Well, no, I, I disagree with you there. I just, well, you. you didn't let me finish. <laughs> okay. But okay. I'm just saying, I disagree with you. I was going to say the same thing. Well, that's fine, but I don't care. So, okay. But that's good. It's like until <laughs> I, I'm making a point, but it's like until they get to <laughs> well, a certain... get, get to it, then so I can rebuttal. Yeah. Land your plane. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is like we talked about like emphasis and things like that. It's like, well, they need to get to a point on the big compound lifts of being able to move some weight with good technique before, you know, the strength can be transitioned to power in theory. But that doesn't mean that it could but it doesn't mean that like you don't train the olympic list because there is a learning curve to them it just means they're not a priority potentially at the beginning well it, it, well in the beginning when you're going through any type of developmental period it's from a if you're talking about strength and power development they are not a priority because they can't right. be they, they, exactly. they, they can't be they can't be because they physically do not have the motor pattern or right. the ability motor ability to to compare to do the movement correct but so i so but i disagree with you when you say if you say like we should put a bigger emphasis on these and maybe you and, but you didn't say like don't do them right but that's what that was what i meant it's like you're still gonna do yeah. them because because to me when i get freshmen in especially freshman basketball players uh, like only thing those guys have ever done is bench press and curls yeah so, so, when, so when they come in when they come in it's, it's rare to see somebody that knows how to hinge that can squat efficiently right um they can squat their body weight and so it's so all 
while I'm training those, I'm still training the Olympic lifts. And I think just the sheer athletic ability that they need to do the movement, to learn the movement, right. translates over to the squat and to the press and to the RDL and to the pull to the point where because they're becoming better from a motor unit or motor learning standpoint, because they're coming better um, at the Olympic list, they also become better at those other lifts because they just become more coordinated. Right. That's my rebuttal. Nick, what'd you hear? I was going to say the same thing. I wasn't going to say as long as you, I was just going to say the skill acquisition of the movement and the motor learning of it is like crucial. Right. And it's like a skill even that is a skill in itself. It's like the more they can learn, the easier it is for them to be taught something later on because they know how to, they have better body awareness and they know how their body moves in space even better in the realm of the weight room. Yeah. And just like, I mean, like we used to do it, um, Mike, with our, with our progression, like we always did, um, basically we broke the lift, whatever lift it was, whether snatch or jerk or, or, or clean, whatever, we broke it down to its most basic form. So if we were snatching, you know, we're doing overhead squat, we're doing snatch right. grip RDL, we're doing presses from behind the head. Right. Um, and then we're, 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 we're doing snatch grip deadlifts. And we would, we, we, all that stuff would be interlaid before we started teaching the snatch, but it was all taught in the same time frame. It right. wasn't like we did that for six weeks and then we taught the snatch. It was all being taught at the same time. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that that's yeah so that goes back to like you know you know you the excuse of like i don't have enough time to teach them isn't valid in my opinion but you know like you don't have that much time so you can't afford to like think like in blocks with the programming either so like if i'm gonna like that point i brought up it's like if i'm gonna program of okay we're gonna squat and bench and and deadlift and then we'll move to the olympic lifts well then i don't then i actually don't have enough time to even it's, it's too like block style thinking to where like i'm gonna do yeah. these lifts for six weeks then i'm gonna move to olympic lifts because now they're more ready it's like well no you probably need to get those things in right away because you don't know you know you might have 16 weeks a semester at most which probably isn't going to happen either but then you're gonna have canceled sessions stuff like that so you want to make sure that you get those things in so they can learn them you know you the emphasis probably isn't going to be on pushing a whole lot of weight on those things for the first several weeks to get them in the program, get them learning, get them exposed to different things is definitely helpful. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I like excuses. The excuses I don't have time to teach them. Like I think some of us misunderstand the, the context of time that I don't necessarily know if people fit me in time in the session, but they, but they mean what's like, like you said, like, well, maybe I've only got this kid for eight weeks. Well, and then, and then yeah. he's and then he's gone and then he's gone for twelve and it comes back. Well, yeah. So then maybe it's not as important or like sure um, or a combine like, like, situation. Like, yeah, yeah. Like like a, like guys getting ready for the combine, guys getting ready for the pros, or guys that are already in the pros with NBA, MLB, NFL. Like, well, why would I bring those guys in and start doing a bunch of Olympic lists, especially if they didn't know how to do them? Well, because right. you only got them for four or six weeks and then they got to go they're they're off they're back to camp or they're doing whatever they're going on vacation they're with their family whatever that might be so it's it's, what's your biggest biggest bang for your buck at that time frame but if like if you're running a high school program and this kid's a freshman and you know you've got them for four years and they've Uh, got they're in two sports well why not like why not teach yeah i think i I think that's an excuse but nobody ever gives it as as an excuse is they don't know how to teach them and which is fine. And, which is completely fine. And that was like, it didn't matter how much I read or, or how many videos I watched um, or how often I did the lift. Like having Coach Mo and Richard Borden and, and those guys like that, are, that, were, that were proficient in the movements and competed in the movements and taught other and coached other people that competed high, high levels in the movements, having those guys around me like made me a way better coach. And if you don't have that, right, then it's, it's going to be kind of tough. It's going to be kind of tough. Well, like I, I, this was something that irritates me or that used to irritate me. Like, I think people want to take the Olympic lifts and like make them their own, you know, like they want to just like, okay, here's the clean. Well, I'm just going to teach it like this, like, you know, whatever. 
but it's like those lifts, like if, if you're going to teach someone how to do the Olympic lifts, it's like, well, you might, you, you better teach them how they are supposed to be done. As in my opinion, like the clean, isn't just like go to the knee and jump and catch it. It's like, well, you want to teach positions. The positions are meant for a reason. Like the goal is, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like with any lift. It's like, well, the goal in the end is to get them to do it right. And then to get them to use a lot of weight, you know, cause that's how yeah. adaptation is driven. But I think a lot of times like the lifts are like, you know, I don't know how to describe, like chopped down and made their own. And then like the fine details of technique are just kind of thrown out the window. And it's like, if you take the view of, okay, this kid's coming in, I'm going to have four years with them or two years or whatever it is. Well, I want to teach them how to do them really, really well so they can do them right. And they stay safe and they can do them well and they can get better at them and they can build up. Yep. What other excuses are there for not doing them? Well, I think the uh, valid one, like Logan injuries, said. Injuries. Okay, yeah, like I ahead. think people are scared of them. But like Logan said, like um, like the, the only thing I think that is fine, it's like if I if I didn't know, even if like when we were working together, if you guys knew the Olympic lift super well and I felt like I should put them in and I had never done them, I can't, I can't put them in. Like you can't just do them because people do them. Like, so if I've never done them, I'm not doing them with somebody, you know? And it's like, if, whatever, if, if I want to learn them, well, then I'm going to take some time and do them myself and educate myself and go somewhere and try to learn from somebody. But like, I can't just put them in because I think they're cool. You know, I think that's a huge mistake. Cause then, cause then, I mean, you could, you could throw them in, Hey guys, we're clean today and they'll do them whatever. And then, but after a while, like the programming is going to get screwed up. Kids are going to start asking more questions. They're going to like individuals are going to need help because they can't do them and you're not going to know what to do. And then you're just, that you're just destroyed. I mean, the, the other thing is like, everybody thinks that they're going to get, they're going to hurt. hurt. They're, yeah. they're going to hurt some kids. Well, and I shouldn't say necessarily strength coaches, but coaches think no. that they're, they're going to hurt the kids. Like, you know, I, I, I regress in season from the clean and we just do pulls and we do, um, right. we'll do snatch and we'll, and we'll do like trap bar jumps and stuff because like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be hard on their wrists, you right. know, and, and, and coaches think the same thing, wrists and elbows, wrists and elbows. Well, and obviously you got the whole See, the baseball world. And so that, and like, and so it, in my opinion, that's not like, well, I don't really think that's, it's a big deal because we do them all the time. So it shouldn't be a big deal. Well, but it's not I, a big I, deal. I, like doing, I was just going like to say, if, you, yeah. if you've been doing cleans all like for a four month span, they shouldn't really bother them right. that much. Right. See. Right. Yeah. It, but but like but I, I but that's but I'm just saying that's their mindset. So, so but do you think your philosophy on that? Because I did the same thing, but I know. But like, do you think that the reason that you do that is because you think that's the best thing to do, or that has how like things have shaped your attitude towards it? Does that make sense? Like how how things, shaped, how things have shaped my attitude? Because yeah, like me too. Because eight years ago, I would have done that. I would have said no, they'll be fine. And but, they are fine. But, 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 but now, but now I, but now I'm not like, now I'm just like, I'm like, okay, I can, I can give that up. Sure. It's not a big exactly. Thing. I can give yeah. that up. I yeah. can give that up. And, and honestly, and, and to be honest, it's, it's perfectly fine because yeah. now I can go, I could probably go just a little heavier uh, on my intensities because we're just doing, we're just pulling. And then, um, which allows me to touch strength a little bit more in season, um, and still work on power and speed. Cause like, as, well, as we all know, like we lose those two qualities faster than strength. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, then once I get into the off season, what I have found, cause in the off season, I always, I, I get like three, maybe four weeks, depends on how far you go into the playoffs. Um, you get that small time frame. Well, the only thing that's really good for us to reintroduce movements and try to build some capacity and just go through and touch on technique again before the guys leave, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's like you don't have, you're coming off of basically six months of, of play and you don't have time to get their capacity to a point where you can actually train or, or, or do anything. So it's, it's like, okay, this is just a good time to work some GPP and work on technique. Well, when I go through my Olympic progression again, like from the floor, they look really good, yeah. but we've been, but fuck, we've been pulling for, for three months, you mm-hmm. know? And so, and that, and that's been our main movement. And so that's, 
it, you know, it has its, it carries over, it carries over. So like, you know, I'm not abandoning them, abandoning them in the in season and um, those qualities that, that I need them, that they need the most work on pulling from the floor mostly. Cause that's a, it's a very difficult skill. Um, right. In my opinion, like, especially where your body is in relationship to the bar, how the bar moves, um, hitting each position as you, as you move up the chain um, and being able to hit those like, and then applying force when you need to apply force. So um, the guys just get way better at that before we get to that, that time frame. Right. I want to add one to your ears, Nick, about the excuses. I think, I think like I have this written down. Um, it's like, I think people think that they can do jumps and throws instead. You know, like you hear that a lot. Like we don't do Olympic lifts. Like I just prefer to do like plyometrics and upper body or lower upper body plyometrics. But I think that what they miss out on that, you know, is like in Logan's case, as you go through the season, you know, he might regress them down or, you know, bump the percentages up and things like that. That's where, like, I think um, the jumps and throws you miss out on. Like the Olympic lifts, it's like squat and bench and pressing and pull up. You can progress those things and regress them down based on time of year, what you're trying to get accomplished throughout years and years and years. But the jumps and throws, they don't have that ability. I mean, you can do it, but it's. Not, I don't think it has the same effect because it's well, not a loaded. Yeah, you can't even load it near yeah. as much. Well, so that, like, how are you loading? I mean, how are you? You're just super limited. Like, are you Correct. you're loading with, with a vest or dumbbells or yeah. or unloading? I'm not with saying a band they're bad. Loading with but... their, like, you know, like like yeah, yeah. It's you don't like you can do, like you can do all those things too. But like, I run Olympic lifting Olympic based program, and I still do those things. Like Correct. so, like it's part of the, it's, it's part of the program already. So well, yeah. You, and it's like, they're a, in my mind, it's like, they're an accessory to the program, but like, they aren't the part of the program. So if like, if I'm going to cut stuff out, that stuff's going like, I, it doesn't, you know, it's not make or break. Like, yeah, it's great, but you can do those things however you kind of want and wherever you kind of want. But the Olympic lifts are a little bit more different, I think. Any other thoughts on the Olympic lifts? They're awesome. You should do them, guys. To our five people listening. Five million. Yeah. Okay. Um this is kind of switching gears completely, but so like a lot of I don't know why I thought of this, but like lifting weights and conditioning, I think like it's usually a depending on who you're working for or who you're working with, there's usually like some kind of battle there. And I want to start getting into this. Um, I don't really know what, from what perspective, but like a lot of people think that they're like interchangeable concepts. Like it's like, Oh, I don't want to lift. Like I just want you to run or vice versa or not, not vice versa, but mainly that's like the complaint that I've gotten. It's like, Oh, we we're out of shape. So we need to run more. I'm just curious, like what our thoughts are on this topic the sore subject of conditioning. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> we need to run more. We need condition. So to me, fitness, fitness. fitness. Well, yeah. Yes, what is fit. your response well, if somebody we, comes to you and tells we, you that? Are we like in season, off season? What? What are? Like, Who where cares? <laughs> let's say. Uh, let's say. Let's say late off season. Getting ready. Does it matter? Start. It does matter. Like to me, it does. But like even then, if we're late in the off season, if I'm doing my job, they should be in shape for the season. Right. But like, so how? What does that mean? Though? Like, what do you like? How? Like, I should have looked at the energy system demands of what their sport entails, and I should have been conditioning in the like. If my plan is all the way through, I'm not to preseason yet, right? Like, right. I'm not there. So, like, I have started my conditioning plan, and I should be on, like, a certain plan of, like, where I want them to be, like, conditioning-wise. And if it's off-season, like, I get most of the say when it comes to lifting weights and conditioning. Which one's more important in the off-season? Probably lifting, because I need my people to get stronger and you know, apply more force and be more athletic and everything. Um, 
you know, and then work the conditioning plan so that they're ready for the season. If you have a coach that trusts you and like you guys work together, you know, you should have a good solid plan and you shouldn't really have any button heads or anything there. But if you have someone who says, you know, fitness is the only thing you kind of need to open eyes about what part of lifting weights can contribute to like their fitness or what part of what you're doing in the off season can contribute to fitness. If you're going to sit there and like ultimatum me and say, which one do you need to do as a strength and conditioning coach? I'm going to have kids lift because even during the off season or during the preseason or in season, they will be playing their sport or doing something for their sport. If they're on campus or in school or whatever, and like that can be some form of conditioning for them. Nice. You know what I'm saying? My man, that was good. So if you're going to make me choose. I, 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 have, I, I don't think you have to choose necessarily. I'm just saying. I think well, that's, I mean, that's that, what you made it sound like. I'll well, yeah, because I think that, that, that whatever is given to you a lot of times. Like, oh, yeah, well. What are you doing for running? I don't care about lifting. I mean, I've had people say, I don't care about lifting. What are you doing for running? It's like, all right, well, whatever. They can whatever. go ahead, Logan. Well, I think, no, no, I, 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 that is, I agree with you, Nick. Like, that's, like, that's how it should be done. And that's how you should think. Um, but your, your, what do you want to call it? Your made up scenario conversation with your coach. I think that's, you're you're living in never never land right there because that's uh that's oftentimes not what happens and uh, it's more oftentimes but i'm saying if you got that golden nugget of a, uh, what's of a, all, what, what 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 doesn't happen logan well you have this you're having this conversation and you just you know educate them on why you're doing what you're doing at that time frame well like yeah like if you gotta if you gotta work for a good coach and they get it and they let you do what you do Five percent. That's awesome, but that's not that's not reality. And in all in all the years that I've coached, I've I, I've worked with maybe three coaches like that, and Correct. I've worked with a lot of different teams. So they're always. So I think what Mike's trying to get at is like, well, what if they say like just like that? Well, lifting doesn't matter. Like all I care about is fitness. Well, I only say that because and, that and, why, and why 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 aren't you running more right? Now? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like well, our minds our mindset is like we have this minute amount of time correct to get the kids as strong and as powerful as possible. Right. And, and when I say that, I say that in respects to them individually and like the demands of their sport, right? Yeah. Not like I'm not trying to make my freshman female soccer player a power lifter. Right. But 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 it probably wouldn't hurt. The, but th there needs to be some sort of strength base, like right. Yeah. And so if I've got if I've got them for, um, whatever. So their their off season starts like January, or whatever. Well, guess what? In January and February, I'm not trying to get them ready to go out and play in the national championship game of soccer in April, right? right. So I'm spending I'm spending a majority of my time working on strength qualities, maybe probably working on some sort of linear speed and acceleration, um, spend a ton of time doing that. And then I, I, there is obviously an aerobic base to it all because they need that. And then they will start fall practice or spring practice and they're going to need some of that, but they just need, they need what they need. It's not like they need, you know, whatever the capacity might be. See, yeah. And the funny thing is, I think is like, you know, if, if you have the whole year that you look at, it's like, well, they're going to spend most of the year practicing, conditioning, playing games, uh, like running on their own. So it's like, what's the thing that they're not going to do? And we used to talk about this all the time. They're not going to go on their own and lift weights, most likely. Like they, some of them might, but like in general, the default response is going to be like, I'm going to go for a run. So if mm -hmm. we have a limited five weeks in the offseason, it's like, well, I would much rather spend that time building the quality that's harder to build because like, you know, conditioning or, or strength, it's like, Strength is hard to learn, hard to build. And I mean, take some time to lose, but like conditioning can be brought on fairly quickly and then goes away fairly quickly. So like you, what you said, it's like, well, if my season's in October, why would I condition in, you know, February when I could condition in August and September 
kind of, and be ready for the season because most of that stuff is all uh, like specificity driven anyway. Mm-hmm. So you can condition all you want or not condition at all or condition a ton and then get on the field and get destroyed. D- it depends on the type of running you're doing. You know what I mean? Like if, if they yeah. have to play a soccer game and you only condition them on the bikes and you condition all the time, they're not going to be ready to play soccer. In my opinion. Joints are going to hurt after game one. Yeah. And they're still going to be tired. Like they're still going to feel tired because they aren't, they, the, the training hasn't been specific enough. They right. only have a minute left. Son of a bitch. Well, this, 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 this is a good topic though. Like, yeah, maybe we need to continue this one next time. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Episode five will be continuing on this. So we'll see you then. Cool. Yeah. Bye.